Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, I will be able to say that 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 So typically, when we find ourselves in hard times, there is a debate about whether this is God's punishment or God's reward or God's mercy. What is happening to us right now? How do we contextualize everything that's happening? And of course, we've spoken about how when uh, things of this sort happen, it's a punishment for some, it's a reward for others, it's a relief for others. And all of that ultimately comes down to how you respond. And one of the things that we cannot lose sight of is that istighfar, seeking Allah's forgiveness, is a means of two things. Number one, it's a means of preventing hardship in the first place. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they would not be punished while the Messenger وسلم, is amongst them and they would not be punished while they're in a state of seeking forgiveness. So seeking forgiveness is a means of preventing hardship from coming on a people. The second thing is that seeking forgiveness is also a means of relieving hardship. Okay, because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that man lazim al istighfar that whoever is frequent, whoever is consistent with their seeking forgiveness, then Allah subhanahu wa taala will make a way out uh, for them from every uh, hardship. That Allah subhanahu wa taala will lift every anxiety, and that Allah subhanahu wa taala will grant them whatever they ask. And so istighfar, seeking Allah's forgiveness, is both a means of preventing harm from coming in the first place, and it's also a means of lifting harm. Once we are in it, either in the collective sense or in the individual sense. So it has a bearing on us both as individuals and as communities for us to constantly be in the state of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Now, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the best way to seek Allah's forgiveness is to recite this prayer of Sayyid al-Istighfar, the master of seeking forgiveness, the chief of seeking forgiveness. And I want to talk about this dua, the supplication. And the Prophet ﷺ said that if a person says it in the morning and then they pass away that day, then they're from the people of paradise. And if a person says it in the evening and they pass away that night, then they're from the people of paradise. So that's that automatically should make you uh, should make you pay very close attention to how amazing this supplication is. That if a person says it in the daytime or in the morning, they would and, and they pass away, then they will be from the people of paradise. And if a person says it in the evening and they pass away, then they will be from the people of paradise. And I want to break down this dua and point to something very particular in it. Allahumma anta rabbi. O oh Allah, you are my Lord. La ilaha illa ant. There is no God but you. Remember we talked about the dua of Yunus alayhi salam, the dua of the Prophet Jonah. Uh, the supplication of Jonah, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al That there is no God but you. How perfect are you? Verily, I was from the wrongdoers. And that La ilaha illa is the best form of remembrance. So here, uh, the testimony of La ilaha illa comes in the very beginning. Allahumma anta rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. La ilaha illa ant. There is no God but you. Khalaqtani wa ana abduk. You have created me. And I am your slave, I am your servant, I am your worshiper. Of course, abduk contains all of those meanings that I just mentioned. Okay? وَأَنَا عَلَىٰ عَهْدِكَ وَوَعْدِكَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُ And I am in accordance with your covenant and your promise to the best of my ability. I will live up to it as much as I can. I will do the best that I possibly can to live up to the covenant that you have taken from me. وَأَنَا عَلَىٰ عَهْدِكَ وَوَعْدِكَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا صَنَعْتُ I seek refuge in you from that which I have committed. Now, by the way, this is this is an, imp- an interesting sentence because you're not supposed to associate or attribute evil to Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, الْخَيْرُ كُلُّ بِيَدَيْكُ وَالشَّرُ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكُ That good is all from you. And evil is not to be attributed to you. Meaning, when, when we commit acts of evil, then it's us, right? It's our wrongdoing, and it's a part of it's a part of our own accountability that we own our own sins. Okay? But here, أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت. I seek refuge in you from the evil of that which I have committed. أعوذ بك. I seek refuge in you. 
And that's something that's very important because even when we own our sins, we should not, we should not think that we own our forgiveness as well. <laughs> forgiveness is all in his hands. Forgiveness is up to him. And we can hope for it and we can ask for it. And we have a Lord that is merciful and forgiving. But that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek refuge in his mercy, not in our ability to get it right. Because you know what? We might be very sincere in our seeking forgiveness at the moment and then we fall back in, into the same sin again. Not that we intend to, but that it might happen if we, if, if we get caught in that same weak moment that we fall right back into that sin again. So, أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت. I seek refuge in you from the evil that of, of which I have committed. Also, notice here we we say أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. We we say I seek refuge in you from the accursed devil. Here, I seek refuge in you from myself. <laughs> I seek refuge in you from what I have committed, because there is you can't properly own the sin if you blame the devil for it. You can't blame the shaitan for it. No. The sin has been committed, I own it. أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت. I seek refuge in you, O Allah, from the evil that I have done. Not that the shaytan has done. If he tempted me to it, it's my fault for not resisting the temptation. I own it and I put my trust not in my ability to get it right from now on, but in your mercy to forgive me. أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت. أبو لك بنعمتك علي وأبو بذنبي. This is my favorite part of the du'a by far. I admit to you your blessings upon me and I admit to you my sins. Here's something that's extremely important and I want you to remember this. You cannot, you cannot appreciate the severity of your sins if you don't appreciate this, the, 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 the greatness of Allah's blessings upon you. You cannot appreciate the greatness of your sins unless you appreciate the greatness of Allah's blessings upon you. Why is this so important? Because what has Allah given to you for you to respond with disobedience? What? How many blessings has Allah showered you with for you to then turn around and to respond with disobedience? And I cannot appreciate the severity of my sins if I have not taken a if I have not taken the time. to appreciate the multitude of his blessings upon me. By knowing his blessings upon me, I should become too shy to disobey him, right? And that's what I want to get out of this, is not just a dua, not just a supplication, but a shyness and a modesty and a shamefulness from disobeying him and sinning against him with everything that he's provided to me. And that's why a man came to Ibrahim al-Adham, rahimahullah, and he asked him for, he said, give me permission to sin. Give me permission to sin. And he said, well, if you're going to sin, the first three of, of the five things he told him, he said, if you're going to sin, then sin in a place that doesn't belong to Allah. Okay, uh, he said, well, every, every, everywhere belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, okay, well, if you're going to sin, then sin in a place where Allah can't see you. He said, but Allah sees everything. He said, okay, well, if you're going to sin, then don't eat or drink from the sustenance of your Lord. He said, but everything's from the sustenance of my Lord. Right. So it's it starts off with those three things. Then how could you then sin? Right. How could you then uh, not feel shy from doing so? Right. So so pull back a little bit and be like, wait a minute. I can't I can't appreciate how bad these sins are if I can't appreciate how great his blessings are. And of course, what is greater than the blessings that he has bestowed upon us is his greatness himself. Subhanahu wa ta'ala is his greatness himself. And that's why Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah said, don't look at the smallness of your sin. Look at the greatness of the one that you have sinned against. Okay? Don't look at the smallness of the sin. Look at the greatness of the one that you've sinned against. So you cannot appreciate your sins or how severe your sins are until you appreciate his blessings upon you. And so before you, you know, as you admit your sins, أَبُوءُ لَكَ بِنِعْمَتِكَ عَلَيَّ وَأَبُوءُ بِذَنْبِي Before you even admit your sins, I admit your blessings upon me. I admit your blessings upon me. I affirm and acknowledge all the blessings that you've showered me with. What abu ubi dambi? And I admit my shortcomings. I admit my sins. Faghfirli fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant. So forgive me because verily no one forgives sins except for you. Subhanallah, this is such a beautiful, uh, a beautiful way to actually end this du'a. It started off with Allahumma anta rabbi. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. And you are the only one who is my Lord. 
It ends off with, O oh Allah, you are the only one who can forgive me. You are my only redeemer. Why is this so important? There are numerous gems that we can extract from this last part of the dua. I'll give you two. The first one is this, that often when we commit sins, we don't feel bad about them until we suffer some worldly repercussions. Someone gets mad at us or we get exposed and embarrassed, and then we feel bad. And so if if the shame is gone and the worldly repercussions are gone, then we become complacent with that sin once again. Here, it's like saying, oh Allah, if you don't forgive me, I'm not satisfied. <laughs> if you don't forgive me, I'm not satisfied. I, I need your forgiveness. I need your forgiveness. Okay? And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعِلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَا يَغْفِرُوا الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُسِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ Those who when they wrong themselves, or when they commit an act of, 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 uh, uh, of shame, or they wrong themselves, ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ They remember their Lord, فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ And so they seek forgiveness for their sins. It's not that they got caught. No, they remember their Lord. That's the first thing. They think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they commit a sin. They remember their Lord. فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ And so they seek forgiveness for it. وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And who forgives sins except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Oh Allah, I need you to forgive me. Right? I need you to forgive me. And the last thing that I want to say about this, so the second gem of this, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah is shy when his servant raises his hands in dua and supplication to let them come down uh, empty without being answered. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Allah hayyun karimun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shy and generous so that when a servant raises his hands to the sky, there's no way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would let those hands come down from the heavens empty and rejected. And when you're calling upon a Lord who is shy of you, even though you should be shy of your sins, right? Uh, he has nothing to be shy from us because of anything we've done for him. But it's Allah, generous, merciful, uh, loving, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is too shy that when someone raises their hands to the sky and says, Oh Allah, to let those hands come down empty. So how is it then when you're calling upon your Lord, al Hayy, your Lord who is shy, and saying, forgive me because no one can forgive except for you. You think Allah is going to let your hands come down without you being forgiven if you're sincere when you make that supplication? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be sincere when we make that supplication. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy on us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to shower us with his generosity despite our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his forgiveness despite our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his complete mercy despite our inherently deficient good deeds. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. I'll see you all tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Same time, as I've said, we move this now to 9.15 Eastern. Um, and then on Wednesday night, inshallah ta'ala, we will have uh, a Ramadan prep webinar, inshallah ta'ala, with 10 tips for a successful Ramadan to make this one the best of your life, inshallah, at the same time at 9.15 Eastern, inshallah. And then on Thursday night, we will move in, inshallah ta'ala, to our Qur'an 30 for 30, uh, summarizing and extra extracting the gems from each chapter of the Qur'an over 30 days. And that's going to be at 10 p.m. Eastern every night of Ramadan, starting this Thursday night, whether it's Ramadan or not. So jazakum Allah khairan.